All right, folks, welcome back. Let me see if I can turn you around so you can see out the front. There we go, that's better. Um, yeah, videoing on my phone today. It's 29th of September. Hopefully the audio should be all right because I've got you on my earphones. I've got you stuck to the windscreen on my phone holder. So hopefully it won't shake around too much. I'll lift the bucket up out of the way so you can see a bit better. Yeah, I'm in the JCB. 53170. I'm at Farm 2. And this week they've been, uh, it's Thursday. Yeah, Thursday the 29th. This week they've been mucking out cow sheds because the cows are in most of the summer. They're back out now, as there's some grass. Yeah, the cows are in most of the summer. So yeah, now they're mucking out cow sheds and I've come up here to push up the heap. It's not very well focused, is it? Maybe it's because the windscreen's dirty. We'll get a bit closer, see what happens. So yeah, I've just popped up here to uh, push up the heat, but it's actually not as big as what I was expecting, to be honest. But we'll give it a go. We'll put the four wheel drive in, we'll give it a push and see what happens. So yeah, these guys have been mucking out cow sheds. I've been, do what have I been doing? I've been doing a bit of spraying, a bit of drilling. Uh, last week, I, I mean, it was quite dry actually, so it should, be, it should push quite well. Last week, I drilled some barley at Farm 3. And this week I've drilled some wheat at Farm 3. Um, I've still got loads of ground at Farm 2 to drill with wheat and barley, but that's not ready yet. We're still waiting for a chit on that because the ground was so dry and hard in the summer, it didn't get cultivated until, say, like three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. Uh, so we're waiting for a chit on it. We're waiting for all the weeds and the, and the uh, last crop volunteers to grow. So we can't drill, we, the agronomist doesn't want us to really drill wheat until October anyway, so uh, the wheat that we've drilled back at home is on ground that goes wet very quickly. So it kind of makes sense to, and we were able to cultivate that in the, in the summer because it's softer soil. But yeah, so that's what I've been up to. I haven't really been doing, as you've noticed, I haven't been making any videos. I haven't had time. Been busy, not just at work, but other things going on at home very busy and the reason why I'm videoing on my phone now is because I thought it would be easier. I definitely haven't got time to go on my computer and do any editing so I thought if I just video some stuff on my phone I can just see if I can chuck it together up on an app on my phone on iMovie or something like that and uh, yeah and put some put some short videos out. So yeah I'll definitely do some video next week when I do some more drilling because the, the drill's been going really well. Chuffed to bits with that uh, Cochlear drill. It's been going like a dream. We did end up putting 70 hectares of oilseed rape in the ground, which I might go and show you in a minute, if I get time. Uh, Simon planted it with the Amazon cultivator. Uh, about, I'll have to have a look on the, my phone at the date. Yeah, so it was the 10th of uh, September when we planted the oilseed rape, and as expected, it has been hammered by the flea beetle, which is really annoying. Uh, I'll show you it in a bit. I'll pop around there and have a look. Some some fields are better than others. Put in about 70 hectares. Yeah, I should have probably put brought a bigger bucket, but it, because it's quite light actually, it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. But it will do the job. So the reason why I'm pushing it up is to save space. So because there's going to be quite a lot to come up here in the winter. And the other reason is to heat, uh, get it piled up get the pile warm, you know, heated up so it starts rotting uh, quicker and also when you get heat in the pile it then kills any seeds that are in it, like black grass seeds, things like that. I'll have a quick look at this field. Oh, so waiting. Laura's on her way up with another trailer load, so I might as well quickly push that up before I go. The pollen nectar stewardship strips have come on nicely. Lots of flowers there. I couldn't tell you what they all are, apart from daisies. <laughs> um, yeah, they just look like weeds to begin with, and now they're coming on well. So this is a field that was uh, spring oats, and now it's going to be a first wheat. It's been cultivated probably about two three weeks ago and I only got rolled yesterday it's gonna to rain tomorrow night or tomorrow evening 
supposed to get 15, about 15 minute rain Friday evening, so fingers crossed. Uh, so this is like a really bad field of black grass. I'm trying to see if there's any actually growing yet. Can't see any. But yeah, get a rain on this. And I don't think it's barely had a rain on it since it's been cultivated. I'll get a rain on it and then this time next week, there's black grass there, look. Get a rain on it. This time next week, it'll be green with black grass. And then we we'll spray it off and drill it probably in about two weeks' time. Something like that. We'll have a quick look at this rape moss here. Got a Chinook coming towards us. I don't know if you can see him. I can't see him on the camera. Looks a lot further away on the camera. So, yeah, drilled 10th of September. It's a bit late. Ideally, we wanted to be drilling this straight after the barley was harvested in July, but there was no point in drilling it uh, until it rained. And it didn't rain till September, did it? So that's when we drilled it. So for those of you that don't know, there used to be a seed dressing on the OSR seed called uh, neonics or neonicotoids, uh, which was an insecticide uh, which killed the flea beetle when they ate the plant so but now that's been banned so we can't use it and now the flea beetle are absolutely hammering the oilseed rape they've basically ruined it it's a real shame really we're gonna we're gonna wait and see what it looks like next week after we have this rain uh friday evening because it may pick up but it is they are pretty bad obviously you can see lots of uh barley volunteers out here but that's alright, that's not a problem to spray them out if we've got a viable crop of OSR. She's just coming down the hill now, look. Where is she? Uh, over there somewhere. I see lots of flashing lights. I think she's met a lorry and the lorry is going backwards. So the barn is pretty much finished, I think. It looks amazing. I'm not really sure about the post and rail fence, but the barn, yeah. It is something pretty special. You've got some new concrete all on the floor. There she comes. When I get more time, I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. I think they put three, it's either 380 or 480 meters of concrete on the floor in there. Here she comes. Got the sun in her eyes now. Got it fairly well pushed up. I'm just gonna push up this last load. She's got a, what is that? I think it's a 155 on the front of there. Don't worry, those power cables are miles away. She's not underneath them. And she's got the 18 ton on the, on the back. I think she's just been stuck, sat in a traffic jam for about half an hour. It's a lovely day for it though. What is it like? I think it's nearly five o'clock. I'll take some pictures of this in a minute. You can follow me on Patreon if you want. It's about two ninety nine a month. Uh, and I put pit photographs and a few other bits of information on there. I've been updating that whilst I've not been on YouTube. I'll take some pictures in a minute. Once I've pushed up this load. It's a bit steady tipping, isn't it? That's why the ones with the single ram are much better. I got it fairly well pushed up. We'll keep on pushing it up as they add to it. Right, I'm gonna head back to the other farm now. I'll, um, yeah, I'll try and do, maybe even do one of these videos every two, every two or three days, something like that. Keep you updated. Right, so we're trying to get home. The road's blocked and there's two lorries blocking the road so we're going to go around the long way. We'll just open the gate to Derek's field and hopefully Laura's going to reverse in there and then we're going to go the other way. Should I wait here or drive in the field? I'm going to be in the way if I stay here so I'm going to go in the field too.
no pressure. <laughs> Do you want me to go in front then? Yeah. Should I go in front? All right, back up a bit then and I'll drive out. No, it's cultivated. I was gonna go behind because you're quicker than me, but... I was gonna go behind because you're quicker than me, but you don't know the way. All right, I'll go in front. <laughs> We're gonna be in trouble now, the gamekeepers are coming. looking at us a bit funny. So it turns out I am going in front. So it turns out I am going in front because Laura doesn't know the way, so I was in the way after all. I could jump out and lock the gates. Oh. Now we've got a cyclist and a runner. Me and Emery, Tom, Dick and Harry down this lane. <laughs> Mate on the boat. I met you on the boat poking his tongue out at me. Laura's gonna squeeze past. Just about. Delivery of rings for the Dalboy rollers. Uh, Colin's just delivered them for us from Hunts. Your boy was here with the JCB because I don't think Colin would have fancied taking all them off by hand. <laughs> 